Welcome to this presentation on plant reproduction. Though it's only going to be a portion of plant reproduction, just asexual. In class you will have learned about sexual reproduction of plants. Um, and so this is going to go really fast. You're going to thank me for this. When we talk about plant reproduction and human reproduction, we're always making comparisons. But um, there's one type of reproduction that plants do that humans cannot. And that type is asexual. And what that means is that plants can produce copies of themselves without using sex cells. For the plants, that means egg cells and pollen, though pollen is the male sex cell, so you can think about it as sperm cells. Again, it requires uh, sexual reproduction requires egg and sperm. For asexual, none of those are going to be involved. So this doesn't involve using flowers at all, which if you haven't learned in class yet, flowers are the reproductive parts of plants. So let's take a look at how plants can be reproduced asexually. One of those types is called tip and stem layering. With tip and stem layering, uh, just like with raspberry bushes, what happens is eventually the stem grows really long and falls over and makes contact with the ground. When it makes contact with the ground, roots form and a whole new shoot or stem starts to grow. If you were to take a pair of scissors or a knife and cut this shoot right here, you'd have two separate plants, but genetically they would be 100% identical. In other words, you've really kind of made a clone. A asexual reproduction can be thought of as cloning. Um, if it involved sexual reproduction, then you'd have genes from mom and genes from dad right just like we were learned in genetics but in this case because these two plants have the same exact genetics because they came from the same sources then they are identical to each other asexual reproduction this can be done uh, naturally over the course of time as these raspberry stems grow longer some people encourage this to happen by forcing the stem down and covering it up with the rock and then the next season they'll have a new set of roots and stems so they can kind of grow their raspberry patch a little bit faster. One example that can be done uh, with the help of humans uh, is cuttings. With cuttings you take the stem uh, with leaves and place that in water or into wet soil and that stem will start to form roots. Um, an example of this would be the geraniums that I have in the windowsill. Those geraniums periodically will uh, make cuttings, make more plants um, so that the variegated ones are the ones with green leaves. If we want more of them, we'll just make some cuttings and uh, get a whole bunch more. Again, cloning doesn't really happen naturally in nature, at least not too often, um, but can definitely be helped along by humans. Grafting, something that definitely doesn't happen in nature, but uh, humans have definitely learned how to do this. With grafting, it's like making puzzle pieces. Notice that the notch on this piece over here and the notch made out of this piece are complementary. They will fit together. And here we're taking a look at the base of one plant, so the root system would be under the ground. And up here, after this notch here, is the stem of a whole different tree. They were notched to be complementary to each other, so they would fit, wrapped around with some landscaper's tape, and then um, they fused together. Uh, this process of grafting takes a twig from one plant and attaches to the stem of another. And with this process, you can end up with some really odd sort of landscape features. What we're taking a look at here is a rose bush, um, but it's a rose bush tree. It's not that these are genetically engineered or selected to be this way. In order to produce a rose bush tree, you'd have to take a rose bush and graft that to the top, or to the, sorry, to the base of a tree. Um, so again, nothing that naturally happens. And this is also the way that seedless oranges are produced. Of course, you'd have nothing to plant with a seedless orange. But if you take a seedless orange top of the tree and fuse that to the base of another tree, you'd have a seedless orange tree. And you can make a whole bunch more that way. One that happens naturally is called runners. This is happening with strawberries here in this example. Runners are little stems that grow along the ground and then when they periodically uh, 
make contact with the ground there they'll make root systems and a whole new plant will form genetically original or gen genetically identical to the original um, in order for you to pick strawberries they have to kind of pick up these strawberries and place them back in the row and so the year before you go in and uh, start collecting strawberries is they're trying to make that row grow and, and be ready for people to come by and pick a whole bunch of strawberries um, they have to have uh, people come by and lift these strawberry plants over and place them right back in the row otherwise they just grow into a whole patch rhizomes the last example that we're going to do here includes grass go back to that picture for a second rhizomes are like runners or tip and stem layering except in this case the stems grow under the ground and then periodically will surface above the ground with a whole new grass plant. Um, so grass is an example. Here's a, an example here. Um, you may have noticed this if you've ever tried to pull grass from a garden or something like that, that when you try to lift it up, you'll see that it's connected to the through um, these rhizomes to the next batch of grass there, the next patch. And so it's a little bit harder to pull out. Um, it's great that it fills in this way. You don't have to keep planting more seeds necessarily. The grass will kind of fill in on its own. Um, but asexual reproduction, the plants that are being formed are genetically identical to the original. And that's it. Asexual reproduction. If you can uh, be able to relay some examples, that would be great. If you can explain asexual reproduction and, and what that means, that's even better. Uh, again, it does not mean that it involves um, flowers at all or sexual organs. It means that no sex cells were used whatsoever. Um, and so see if you can uh, compare and contrast that with the, or with the sexual reproduction that we're learning about with flowers in class. That's it. I told you it'd be short and sweet, and that's all we got.